And now more on the Trump raid. Let's establish a few things. First, I don't know what's going on at Mar-a-Lago. You don't know what's going on at Mar-a-Lago. The FBI agents who raided Mar-a-Lago don't really know what's going on. They're merely following orders, as law enforcement agents do. Harvard Law Professor Alan Dershowitz said recently that FBI raids like this used to be an act of last resort, but now it's an act of first resort, an attempt to, quote, get on TV, in other words, to shape public perception. It's something the FBI didn't do last spring when they made a more cordial visit to Mar-a-Lago when Trump and his lawyers were there. And therein lies the problem. We all know this could have been done in a lower key way through lawyers, through agreement, through prearrangement. Does anybody in his right mind think that Donald Trump is still flushing documents down the toilet as New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman alleges that he did in her new book, even though he was in New York City at the time of the Florida raid? Does anyone believe in our hyper-politicized world that there are not federal judges who hold grudges against the bombastic Trump and would eagerly sign a flimsy warrant? Remember the FISA court? It had a track record of rubber stamping literally 99.97 percent of over 33,000 warrants that federal agencies sent its way in its first 33 years of existence. It is with some skepticism, then, that we should take the news that the federal magistrate who signed off on the FBI's search warrant for Mar-a-Lago is Bruce Reinhardt, who 15 years ago left a position as a federal prosecutor to join Jeffrey Epstein's defense team. The trouble is for Maggie Haberman and for The New York Times and for the FBI and for our courts of law, our universities, the White House, the Congress, Big Tech, the CDC, the FDA, the IRS, the Pentagon, the UN and the World Economic Forum, I could go on and on, is that we Americans have lost trust in our institutions and with good reason, they are failing us. Just take the Justice Department as one example. No person is above the law in this country. Nothing stops us. Even a former president. No per I don't know how to, maybe I'll say that again. No person is above the law in this country. I can't say it any more clearly than that. There is nothing in the principles of prosecution, in any other factors which prevent us from investigating anyone, anyone who's criminally responsible uh, for, for a, 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 an attempt to undo a democratic election. But under Garland's command, DOJ and the FBI have undertaken to monitor parents at school board meetings who object to teaching children hatred based upon race. It has imprisoned January 6 protesters, many of whom deserved it, but others of whom neither entered the Capitol nor engaged in any violence, threats or conspiracies, but who were merely exercising their First Amendment rights. That, while DOJ has failed to prosecute protesters outside the homes of Supreme Court justices, even though intimidation of a federal judge is not protected by the First Amendment, it is expressly forbidden by federal law. Remarkably, DOJ's failure to enforce that law continued even after a would-be assassin was apprehended outside Justice Kavanaugh's home. And DOJ has thus far failed to charge the president's son, Hunter, whose drug, gun, prostitution, and shady business dealings, 10% for the big guy, are all documented in pictures and words on his computers. Information that, according to FBI whistleblowers, was for weeks falsely categorized by senior FBI officials who leaked it to the media as Russian disinformation. The same FBI that lied to federal judges on the FISA court to get warrants to spy on the Trump campaign and to continue that ruse for three years of his presidency. The same FBI that seemed to have no curiosity about Hillary Clinton's permanently deleting, hammering, and bleach bidding a hard drive that contained tens of thousands of emails while she was Secretary of State. No one outside the insular walls of the FBI and the Justice Department know how this will end. But the department's insularity itself is a problem. Remember that as a young man, J. Edgar Hoover was elevated to FBI director to remedy the Bureau's corruption until insularity ensured his own corruption. The same case could be made for James Comey. Will the same case be made for Christopher Wray and Merrick Garland? So stay tuned. They may be proven right about Donald Trump, the unconventional president who has repeatedly played loose with facts and the law. But if they're wrong, and this is a political prosecution that goes to trial, 
Trump stands a poor chance before a D.C. jury, a city in which registered voters cast ballots for Hillary Clinton by a nearly 10 to 1 margin in 2016. And it does not bode well for the United States, where mistrust reigns, where institutions are in decline, and where the gospel truth badly needs a resurgence. Hi, I'm Doug McKelway, and thank you for watching Centerpoint. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Leave a comment below and keep the conversation going by sharing this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.